Welcome to the Dream Big Series podcast with today's guest, Joe Mills. This is Chad Borkwin, and this is the Dream Big Series. I am a professional musician and recording artist that has been fortunate enough to learn how to get paid doing what I love. But this didn't just happen for me. In fact, I have years of doing things other than music that have all played into part of the success I get to experience now. But more importantly, I've learned the value of having the right people speak into my life and how that is the key to breaking free of old limiting habits. So if you're tired of being stuck and you believe there is more for you in life, the good news is everything I've done is a result of what I've learned and it can be taught. Join us as we bring topics and guests onto this show to provide you with valuable insights on how to get to your big dream. This is the Dream Big Series. Welcome to the show. Heard of Confessions of a Taxi Cab Driver? Well, today is Confessions of a Tour Bus Driver. Joe Mills, our guest today, has been in many, many parts of this industry. Joe started out as a touring recording artist in the Christian rock scene. He then went on to be a producer and engineer for many, many artists for over the years. Joe and his wife, Kim, have raised two boys that now also tour around the country with uh, their own group and having a lot of success with that. One of the things that I think makes me really excited or that I'm excited about this interview is just the unique perspective that Joe offers from being a tour bus driver. And he is and, and he's driving for groups at the highest level, but he gets to see he gets to see what works, what doesn't work. He gets to see, you know, just all the inner workings of what happens on this bus that I think is going to bring you just a lot of information. And I think you're really going to enjoy this perspective. The music industry is drastically changing and for the better. The power to have a successful music career is in your hands and no longer up to a few gatekeepers. The key is having the right information, the right tools, and committing to do the work. I want to help you jumpstart your career with my free ebook called Play Music, Make More. This free ebook is everything we've done with our own group, as well as what I've learned being an entertainment agent, and it's all played into the success we've had as independent artists. Visit PlayMusicMakeMore.com to get your free copy today. All right, welcome to the Dream Big Series podcast, and today I am super excited to interview a long long time friend and uh we've 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 hung out as friends together we've we've worked together uh, toured together we've toured together we've just done recorded together recorded together yeah. i mean there's there's a lot of things uh if the list that we haven't done together is probably shorter maybe we broke the bread <laughs> together yes we have <laughs> this is joe mills so he is he is from right here in kansas city and joe has uh, he's been his own touring artist. Uh, in fact, he's you've got an album coming out of your own soon as well. EP, yeah. EP coming out, yeah, um, which is the new way, right? It is the new way. The, uh, yeah. uh, he's also a recording engineer, which is one of the first experiences we had with Joe was he recorded right. our first album. Uh, Joe was also our live tech for quite some time, mm-hmm. traveled, and he drove, drove our uh, RV at the time as yeah. well. And uh, which kind of brings to why I really thought it'd be cool to have you on here today is is what you're doing now, which is sure. Joe is driving tour buses for major acts all over the country. And so what um, you know, you've heard confessions of a uh, taxi driver. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to do confessions of a tour bus driver today. And so welcome, Joe Mills, man. Thanks for being well, here. Well, it's good to be here. Thank you. Yeah. So just for fun. You know, maybe just throw out a little laundry list of, of some of the acts you've been you've been out touring with. Uh, recently, uh, um, whatever, I yeah. just got yeah. back from uh, Natasha Bedingfield tour. Mm-hmm. Um, you remember her um, unwritten song, unwritten, huge pocket full of sunshine. Yeah. Um, great tour, great people. Had a blast on that tour. So Natasha Bedingfield. Let's see. Before that, I was out on the Morrissey and Interpol tour. Mm-hmm. Uh, I drove Interpol. Um, before that I was out, well, I love it for a couple of months. Uh, heard a rumor that I'm going back out with him, uh, next year, hopefully, because mm-hmm. they're a great camp. Lyle's a great guy. Great guy. 
let's see, before that, um, I was with a band called Metric from Canada, which is a uh, man. I mean, we, we toured the U.S. and we're doing um, clubs in the occasional theater. But when we toured Canada, then they were they were selling out arenas. So they're wow. huge in Canada okay, and quite big in the States. I did two tours with them this year. Uh, let's see, before that, Mumford & Sons. I was out with them mm-hmm. a year ago. It was uh, December last year. Let's see. Oh, really great band from the UK called Don Broco. So you remember Mike Shinoda from Linkin Park. Mm-hmm. Okay, Mike Shinoda did a solo record um, after the unfortunate, untimely death of Chester Bennington, which I took really hard because I'm a Linkin Park fan. Yeah. But he, uh, so Mike Shinoda did a, a solo record and then did a solo tour. So I was on that tour driving the opening band called Don Broco, which is a group from the UK. Fantastic guys. They left that tour, went back to the UK, and did an arena tour. I mean, they sold out arenas all over Europe. Now they're back in the States now, and they're selling out uh, the clubs that they were opening in last year. Great guys. Let's see. Before that, I was with AFI. Uh, AFI is a band from the West Coast. So huge fans all over the country, rabid fans that would be there. We'd get into the venue at 6 a.m. and there'd be people lined up, you know. (laughs) Love the guys from AFI. Wonderful guys. Um, Miss Murder was kind of their big hit. Mm -hmm. You probably heard that song. Uh, Let's see. Oh, a band from uh, Scotland, Franz Ferdinand. Oh, yeah. Oh, great guys. Had a great time with those guys. Uh, Did that tour. Um, And, of course, um, you know, you really see how big they are when you go to festivals with them. And there'll be 20,000, 30,000 people out there. Yeah. And then we do, you know, clubs, or uh, and and then they do another festival of 20,000, 30,000 people. And then when they play the UK, of course, they're just selling out arenas and stuff, too. Um, and some country artists. Uh, uh, I, I drove for a band called Big Time Grain Company. Um, <laughs> that had to be an experience. That was an experience. I probably have more stories you from just, that. You got it. the shirt. I have the shirt. <laughs> I've been planning on wearing it nice. all week. Yeah. So the fact that I'm wearing this on tour. So one of the things, Joe, that I remember you know, spending time with a lot of time with you is you've always had a passion for buses and I kind of do too. Yeah, I don't know that I have this, to the extent you do, but, thing. but I always got it out of my, I always got my bus conversation, um, fix from you. Oh yeah. Cause we would, you we know, did, I, didn't we? we did, we talked about them a lot, you know, and we, we, you know, we just, just bought our first one recently and, uh, but it's, you know, it was an obvious passion of yours. Yeah. Uh, in addition to music, which sure. So everything you've got going on in your life is things you're passionate about, which Pretty is much. what, yeah, that's what this whole podcast is about. Absolutely. I'd like to maybe just, if you could share a little bit how you ended up from us talking about buses uh-huh. to now these driving, all these tours. these tours. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a couple things. So I've spent most of my career as a producer engineer in the studio and the studio world has changed drastically. Um, I've owned a couple of commercial studios, you know, designed from the ground up, built by a studio designer. Um, these days, people can make records basically with their laptop. Yeah. You know, uh, I do that. Mm-hmm. And my new project is being done in tour buses and hotel rooms, mm-hmm. you know. Um, so the ability for a person like me to make a living in the studio world has gotten more difficult when you have a big commercial studio. So um, I was complaining about that to a friend of mine one night in my driveway. I remember it like it was yesterday. Uh, He he had come over to do a a piano session for me. He was playing on a record and does a lot of piano sessions for me. But he, at the time, had taken to driving for this company that I drive for now. And he'd been doing it for years. He already had over a million miles on him before we had this conversation. And he said, I know you like buses because you're always wanting to see mine when I'm in town. And yeah. I study buses and I, I just, I mean, I look at stalycoach.com, you know, and look at buses for sale. And I met Wade Staley and I'd go there and look at him and wish I could buy one. And, uh, but he told me, you know, if you started, if you got a, if you got your CDL license, you'd mm-hmm. never be out of work and you can still do your studio, but you could also do this. Mm-hmm. And the next day I went down to the school bus lot because I knew they would train me and I could get my commercial driver's license through them Mm -hmm. and they would train me for free if I'd worked up for them for a while. So I did that and I actually enjoyed it so much that I, I drove school buses for two and a half years. Mm -hmm. Um, 
crazy kind of person that actually enjoyed it. But I love kids. Right. Uh, and I drove a special needs bus, actually, with a wheelchair lift on it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I wasn't always sure when I was driving that or when I was driving the big time bus, depending on, you know, my passengers. <laughs> right. We didn't have a wheelchair on yours, but... <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but... <laughs> That is easy one sometimes, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> After the show, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so um, I did that, and then, but I knew that my goal was to get to entertainer coaches, which right. is what we call them. Uh, tour buses, you know, but mm -hmm. entertainer coaches is kind of the proper term. So I did that, and then I, I worked my way into charter buses, and I drove for a charter bus company here in town mm -hmm. for a few years, and I started doing um, everything from taking the old folks to the casino to tons of college sports. I did tons of college sports, mm -hmm. college sports, all of like basketball, volleyball, baseball, football. Um, then I, one of my favorite driving gigs was I was the driver for the Kansas city T-bones then for a season where I drove this huge 53 foot machine. Mm -hmm. It was a, it was a Volvo semi truck front end with a 40 foot box on it. That slept 29 people. So it was like a tour bus with a generator and everything, but yeah. but it's bigger than way bigger actually. Mm -hmm. And I drove them all over the country, up into Canada, everywhere with you know, with the, the baseball team. Loved that gig. Um, then I started um, while I was doing charter buses. I would start uh, you know kind of I'm in a couple of groups on Facebook about tour buses, and I would you know somebody would say, hey, I need a driver for this or for that. And so you find people that own their own buses that I, you know, I could contact them and say, hey, I'm a driver. I've got this much experience. I could lie a little bit and say, sure, I've driven entertainer coach. Maybe <laughs> I hadn't, but I, I went out and did a few tours um, with people who own their buses, you know, yeah. and um, uh, who don't always have access to a roster of drivers mm -hmm. like a company does. Uh, I started doing that, and then I moved to a different charter company that also had an entertainer division with the goal of me running their entertainer division because that was a real passion of mine. Mm -hmm. So I worked for them. I did tours for them. I did some charters, but mostly my, my job there was to deal with the three entertainer buses that they had. Um, would go out and do tours, you know, with those. And um, really, uh, oh, and the other thing I started doing was team drives. Mm -hmm. So a team drive is if, if, a, if a band has to go from one venue to another, and it's going to take more than 10 hours. Well, the driver can't do that by himself. We're limited to 10 hours mm -hmm. in, a, in a, you know, at a For time. good reason. Yeah. For good reason, yeah. yeah. And so what we do is we fly in an extra driver called a team driver mm -hmm. to fill in that, those extra hours. Let's say the trip's going to take 14 hours. Well, you can drive 10 of them, but you fly in another driver to take up the slack. Usually you'll split it, you know. Right. So I started doing that for the company that I drive for now. Um, this career, you really got to know somebody. Mm -hmm. And thankfully I did. And you really have to work your way up. It took me six years mm -hmm. of doing this to get a seat with the company I'm with now. Yeah. Um, but I got my foot in the door there by doing team drives. In fact, I'm getting ready to do one next week with mm -hmm. the trans Siberian Orchestra, actually. Yeah. Which would be cool. Um, yeah, we were talking when you got that call. Oh, were we? Yeah. That's right, we were, because I had to call you back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We were on the phone. Uh, so that worked me up to, um, being able to actually get a seat, be assigned my own bus. This company that I work for, we have over a hundred entertainer coaches. Wow. We're out with everybody right now from Elton John to Metallica to mm -hmm. you name it. And we do Def Leppard every year. You know, we, I mean, big, big, big tours. And, um, you know, I just find, I know that my friend that worked for that company was talking to the driver coordinator. Yeah, I just know that he was, nobody's admitted mm -hmm. it, but I know that they were, checking in with each other and he was like, yeah, I think he's ready now. Right. You know, let's give him a shot, you know? And so they put me in an older bus and sent me out on a tour and they threw me out of the nest. I mean, they put me in a bus <laughs> with a trailer mm -hmm. and sent me to Montreal, Canada and New York city. Wow. And like, you know, if you can survive those, did you have to park in New York city? I mean, you know, so in New York city, we don't go in that often. Okay. Um, there's a place in Secaucus, New Jersey that every bus driver knows it's a mm -hmm. staging point right in front of a Sam's club. If any drivers are listening to this right now, they know Secaucus. Okay. They've all been to this place. Right. Um, uh, that particular tour, thankfully, the band um, just had me stage out in Secaucus. Mm -hmm. They brought out vans to get the gear they wanted. They went in and did late night with one of the late night shows. Mm -hmm. uh, 
I'm trying to remember which one. They brought me a shirt. I, <laughs> yeah. We've done it so many times now, I can't remember. But um, So I stayed there, went to the hotel, slept. They came back that night. We got in the bus and went on. Now, I was just in New York City with a trailer. And trailers are a, a tricky thing because technically you're not supposed to pull a trailer mm-hmm. with a bus into New York City because of the length requirements. So the bus is 45 feet long. The trailer makes it 60 feet long. Yeah. You can only be 35 feet long. So you're already questionable with a bus in New York in City. City. In New York okay. City. You go through the Lincoln Tunnel, man. If you're longer than 35 feet, they can get you. No kidding. But they, they don't. Um, you know, everybody knows you can do it. But if something happens and they show up, they yeah. can cite you for that. But, um, you know, I've been in and out of New York City many times now on a bus. Mm-hmm. Parking. Uh, you generally, you know, on this level of touring, they have parking for you. They bag meters. Or a lot of times if you're at arenas, then there's parking or we park under the arenas, which is really cool. Sometimes you're backing down under an arena, down into these yeah. tight little spots. Um, but this uh, most recently, just last month, I was there with the bus and tour and um, had to go all the way down to 8th Street to the uh, uh, Webster Hall, which is a really cool venue. Mm-hmm. And the next day I had to take it all the way back up to um, right, across, right over by Trump Tower, actually, yeah. to ABC Studios for Live with Kelly and Ryan show. And But they had parking for me both places and... You know, they had cones up and I was able to park. But it is a little tough yeah. doing that. But so that, I mean, that's the thing, you know, you have, because you have to be able to do whatever they can throw at you. So you got to mm-hmm. really get some experience. And some of the best trailer experience I got was with you guys, mm-hmm. with a motorhome and a trailer. Backing that thing up, man. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You remember Branson and some other places where I, it oh, was yeah. tight. And that one had was to rough. Do that. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, that was kind of my the way I did it but I knew I had a goal in mind and I was trying to get with this company and I knew when I got with this company that I would it would be the place for me to be yeah man all right so that's so when we go in and talk to like kids in our dream big series one of the things we talk about is the difference between a backup plan which is basically a it's a plan, a plan B, a plan B, yeah. and you have it because of fear, because you're afraid you're not going to get your really plan. Have one. <laughs> well, you didn't. You, in so, fact, what, we, what yeah. we contrast that with is a support plan, where everything you do uh-huh. is leading towards the ultimate goal. Which that entire story is exactly what I just heard you did. Yeah, that's. Totally I mean, what from I did. the from the, I love the part that the day you heard about, it, or there the next day you the heard about day. this, you went to the, the school bus place. This was in February of many years ago, but yeah. I remember it being February. Yeah. And you know, so, all right, so let's transition a little bit okay. because, um, I'd like to, you know, you've, you've seen a lot of what makes a band successful just from driving. I know you have, you've had sure. to have, and that's, you know, there's a lot of people watching this podcast that their goal is, man, I'm, I'm like an independent artist. I'm trying to figure out, I'm just trying to figure out how to get better gigs, let alone end up on a tour bus somewhere. Well, so, go ahead. Okay, a lot of the bands that I've toured with are technically independent artists now. Mm-hmm. Uh, Metric, for example, yeah. is one of the most successful independent artists. But Let's they're, talk about I mean, them. They're, they're, <laughs> they're yeah. selling out arenas, you yeah. know. Um, well, let me tell you this, and, and uh, people ask me these questions quite a bit. Um, first of all, you can't suck. No matter what you're doing, right. that's a given. That's a given. That's yeah. a given because I'm out there with some of the most talented and successful people in the industry mm-hmm. and they're all competing, right. <laughs> you know, so you got to be on that level. However, mm-hmm. I've had people tell me more than once and I know this is true. Let's say a band needs a photographer. Okay. Let's say a band needs um, a merch person. Let's say an artist needs a guitar player, a drummer, a bass player, a backing musician. Mm-hmm. Every one of them will tell you, we might know a guy that is the best guy in the world, but we don't like to be around him. Yeah. So we'll take the next guy. We'll take the second best because you got to be a good hang. Mm-hmm. If you're not a good hang and if you're not easy to be around on the road, then it doesn't matter how good you are. People don't want you around. Mm-hmm. So you you got to understand that when you're in a tour bus, you know, the, the buses are set up for 12 people. Rarely do we have 12. We'll have 12 bunks. We usually will have 10 or fewer. And then they'll have what they call junk bunks, which is a bunk that, you know, nothing's on so they can throw their shoes and their backpacks and that right. kind of thing. But think about having 10 people in a tour bus for a month or even two months at a time. That's a pretty small space. And you're in each other's business, you know, and you mm-hmm. get to know each other really well. 
And if, if you're not cool to be around, uh, I was on a tour this summer that had four crew changes <laughs> because yeah. of people's personalities. Okay. And without going into names or anything so, of that, what maybe just, what are a couple things you saw that got them kicked off on that, that tour? Yeah. One of them that we had a, a, a lighting guy that he was always really cool with me. Um, it's cause you're cool. Uh, what do right. I say? Yeah. You know, there's two people that you need to be always nice to, no matter what. And it's yeah. the people who make your food and the person that drives your bus. Right. <laughs> you got to be nice to them. <laughs> so, anyway, um, he had a he just had a short temper. Mm-hmm. In fact, I came back to the bus one time, and we have now our buses are when they're brand new and they're built out the, with the interior and everything. They're worth a million and a half dollars easy. Mm-hmm. So the light fixture over the entrance door. It's probably a $35 fixture, okay? Mm -hmm. And there's a bunch of them in there. So nothing's cheap about these buses. But I came back one time, and the cover over that thing was missing. And I thought, I wonder what happened to that. And I didn't find out until about a week later that what happened was this guy slammed the door because he got really angry at somebody. And he went out and slammed the door, and that thing fell on the the tile floor and shattered. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, then he also blew up. At, at a couple of other crew members in front of our artist who was doing a meet and greet oh, on the stage 30 feet away, 40 feet away. And this guy's out there yelling and screaming and cussing and being a baby. And he, I didn't see him that day. Yeah. He was gone that night. He was on a plane that night Yeah, because he, he couldn't keep together. Um, so funny story, uh, they replaced him with a guy. They were kind of going, does anybody know a lighting guy that can come out? Yeah, I know somebody saw our guitar tech like well i know this guy oh I, i'm trying to I'm trying to remember his name let's say his name is kramer okay yeah he's like oh, i know this guy named kramer and, and he's in he's in atlanta and he's a really great guy and i'll call up there and we'll see if he's available yeah give him a call so he calls this venue which i've been to many times hey i'm trying to find kramer the light guy we need a guy on the road oh kramer moved to seattle here's his number so they give him the number. He calls him. Is this Kramer, the light guy? Yeah, how you doing? Hey, we need a guy. Can you come out right away? Yeah. So he comes out, flies out. It's the wrong guy. It wasn't the same Kramer. <laughs> oh. Uh, and, um, yeah, it wasn't the... It, oh, that's right. Like, oh, this isn't this, the right guy. Well, this guy turned out to not know anything. But he talked really big like he knew everything. And... Um, he was in everybody's face the moment he got on the bus. He's wow. like, he, I mean, right the moment he met me, he's like, how you doing? I'm going to need you to change my sheets and get me a new comforter, or new, you know, and all this stuff. And like, and while you're at, uh, I need my clothes washed in the morning. I'm like, I don't do that, you know, <laughs> <laughs> send it out, yeah. you know. And he lasted about three days right. and he was gone. Um, we had a guitar tech who, um, who, came out on the stage with every night at the same time, he would bring a guitar out to our artist Mm -hmm. and he put the capo on upside down. Actually, he brought out two guitars tuned differently for this Mm -hmm. section and the capos were on upside down and our artist, you know, it messed him up. Yeah. He can't do that. Right. He was gone, you know, so you got to be on your game. He was a good hang. He was a really nice yeah, guy, and we did. liked him. But for some reason, he didn't quite connect with the artist. They just mm-hmm. quite didn't get along, and he made a couple of mistakes like that. Mm-hmm. So you got to be on your game. you got to have a great attitude. Um, generally, it's going to be an attitude thing that gets people yeah. booted. So on so, the flip side, um, let's talk about the positive. What have you seen that stood out? from people that just you, you, you knew they were there because of who they were? Okay, so on this... I did a tour recently. Um, the first night of the tour, they fired the drummer and the, and the keyboard player. Mm-hmm. This is a big deal. They had a day off the next day and then a show the next day. This was this what we had. I don't remember twenty some odd shows to do. Over twenty shows, I think. And they fired the drummer and piano player the first night. Um, and it was attitude. Okay, yeah. so. I met them two days later in another city and they had brought out a new drummer and a new, a new keyboard player. And I was talking to those guys on the bus. I said, man, you guys had to, you guys had to hit it hard. Because yeah, we had to learn like 14 songs, you know, in 24 hours. Mm-hmm. And I said, um, how do you do that? And he goes, you just make it happen. 
You just have to make it happen. And that night, with those two guys that had never even rehearsed with them, Mm -hmm. the band came in after the show and said, that was the best show we've ever done. Mm -hmm. And every night they told me that. They said, man, this is just getting better and better every night. Because these guys were on their game. Mm -hmm. They knew what was going on. They were easygoing. They weren't uptight. Their attitudes were, yeah, we're going to make it happen. Um, I, I heard them talking about a phone conversation they had before they each flew out. They didn't know each other, so they would introduce themselves to each other over the phone and like, okay, I'll meet you tomorrow. And um, they needed somebody to run tracks. A lot of bands use um, tracks, you know, to because you can't bring in that choir every night. Right. So, But you need those vocals or you need um, all the extra guitar parts or something. Sometimes they'll run tracks that will have some of those extra percussion parts or something. Mm-hmm. And he's like, okay, do you want to run the tracks or, or do you want me to? These guys were talent, talking to each other. He's like, well, I'll do it, man, it's fine. And the other one was like, well, I can do it, it's fine. It, but both of them knew what they were doing. Both mm-hmm. of them knew how to do it. Mm. They were comfortable with it. it did, the thought of it didn't stress them out. They were on their game. Mm-hmm. They were excited. They were available. And they were great hangs. And um, those guys are friends of mine now. Yeah. You know, one of them uh, does all the music for a very popular TV show that, you know, I probably can't mention, but um, mm-hmm. he, he does. And he was working on that on the road, you know. Um, yeah, so attitude. Attitude is the thing. Um, you know, the, the things that drive people nuts on the bus are like smoking. You know, like you might have a couple smokers on the bus. Mm-hmm. Man, smoke before you get on the bus. Don't, right. you know, unless you're all smokers. Or maybe the rear lounge is reserved for the smokers, you know, and they go back there and open the window or whatever. But um, attitude is everything. Yeah. It really is. Uh, And the other thing that that I think is, well, it's vitally important is relationships. You can't do this if you don't have relationships. And you have to maintain and steward those relationships. Take care of those relationships. Be cool with people. Don't Mm -hmm. burn bridges. Don't leave a bad impression, a bad taste in people's mouths when you part ways after a tour or whatever, you know. Um, there are, I'm convinced that there are musicians out there that are probably better, better singers and players than we've ever seen, but mm-hmm. we'll never hear from. Right. Because they don't have the relationships or they won't go out and build the relationships. Yeah. You know? Well, and so, yeah, one, one of the things, you know, that, I think you see is people, they have this upper limit problem where they, they'll get to a certain point in their career and then they will sabotage it. Maybe That's not even, of death. it is, yeah. you know, they uh, like from a guitar player point of view, you, you, you might get a certain area as a guitar player, you keep getting better as a guitar player, but because you've hit this upper limit, you don't feel like you have value to go past that. You sabotage it with your yeah, attitude. I think I've done that. My, you know, I've done we that myself. Have. Yeah, yeah. For sure. as, a, as a producer and an engineer, I've absolutely done that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, when I look back now, I can see things I would have done different in my career. Yeah. Um, you're not human you, if you didn't. <laughs> I know, yeah, right? right? <laughs> but, you know, don't be afraid um, to do more than one thing. Yeah. Okay. I, I drive tour buses. Like, if you look at my Instagram, it says, I'm Joel and Jordan. I'm Kim's hubby. Joel and Jordan's dad. I mix music and drive tour buses. <laughs> yeah. you know, so be good at more than one thing. I think it's actually very important to be good at more than one thing in the touring world. Be able to do a few things. Mm-hmm. With you guys, I ran front of house and drove. You know, mm-hmm. um, I don't see myself as a player so much. I started out as a singer-songwriter in the Christian music world, and I actually charted some music on the charts and had some airplay and so forth. But um, that's not my main thing. And, and I'm doing a new project now because I can. <laughs> I'm right. not on a label now. I can do whatever I want. Right. And I'm having a blast doing it. But be, be, be good at more than one thing. I think it's really important mm-hmm. to, you know, don't spread yourself thin. Be really good at those, those right. couple of things. And make sure you're but passionate about it. And make sure you're passionate yeah. about it. Mm-hmm. And my passion wanes a little bit with being on tour. Sometimes it's, it's hard. Sometimes it's work. Sometimes yeah. it's not all fun. Mm-hmm. You know, and sometimes you're out there because this is what you do and you're grinding through. You know, when you're doing a two month tour and you're doing six shows a week, I just did one of those. We had 66 days I was out and for, we did six shows a week. Nobody does that. Mm-hmm. You know, you do two in a row or three in a row with a day off, but we were doing six in a row, day off, six in a row, day off. For two months we did that. 
And those days off, a lot of times for the driver, it wasn't a day off because we were still going somewhere. Right. So there are times when it's work. you got to have a work ethic. Man, you better have a work ethic. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you if you are, if you're the artist, uh, make sure that you're up and ready to go for sound check. Mm-hmm. Be cool with the people that come up and talk to you and ask for an autograph or, hey, how do you play that lick? Mm-hmm. Or tell me about your guitar rig or whatever. If you're on the crew, man, you better be there for <laughs> whatever, yeah. whenever you're supposed to be there, you know, if... If lobby calls a certain time or bus calls a certain time, don't miss it. Yeah. Be early. Be early. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. um, get in there. They, you know, uh, on the big tours, they have what's called walk and chalk about 7 a.m. where they walk the floor and they chalk the floor where all the motors and the cables go up into the grid up in the ceiling, you know. And if you if walk and chalk is 7 a.m., you better be there, mm-hmm. you know. Um, so there, there's a lot, depending on your, your uh, job. Um, be good at it, but be there, be present, be in the moment. And even when you're exhausted, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, if I'm tired and I've got to drive six or seven hours, you can rest assured I'm going to do what it takes to stay awake and get them there safely. Yeah. And my job is to do it without waking them up. Right. You know, so yeah, they don't want to feel those turns or stops or speeding up and slowing down or whatever. You know, so, one of the things that you said to me early on when you started doing these entertainer runs Uh because I was asking you about this and you said, you know, the, uh, I said, how are you just, how are you booked up all the time? And you said to me, you said, well, there's two types of drivers out there. (laughs) Do you remember this? No, but I'm (laughs) I'm curious. You said there's nice guys and there's good drivers and Uh, it's rare that they're both. It's Um, true. and And he goes, and you said that I work hard to do both. And so I get requested. I do get requested. I think it, as a tour bus driver, there are four things. I, I feel like there are four rules, and I've told a lot of people mm-hmm. this. Um, be safe. Yeah. You've got to drive safe. You got. You have to be safe. You're driving a million-dollar vehicle with mm-hmm. high-profile clients. you know? You got to be safe. Uh, you got to be smooth mm-hmm. because they might be standing up back there on one foot with a glass of wine in their hand. <laughs> yeah. and if you knock them over, you're fired, you know, right. don't hit rumble strips. Um, keep the bus clean mm-hmm. and don't be a dick. Can I say that? You just did. Can I it's say fine. dick? Totally fine. Don't be a dick. Yeah. And, and there's a lot of guys that can do two of the four, but they can't always do three or four of them. But if you can do those, you know, mm-hmm. you'll get requested back. And thankfully I like people in general. I like people a lot. In fact, my nickname lately has become the camp counselor <laughs> on tour. See that. Yeah. Because we have what's called a jump seat, you know, over yeah. here. And it's not uncommon for someone to come up and we'll just start talking, mm-hmm. tell our life stories. And I don't know what it is about the driver, but a lot of people will come up and just start yeah. talking. And we have these deep talks and it's really cool. That's awesome. You know. Well, your four, you know, your four pillars. Yeah would apply to most musicians. I think so. So, See anything, yeah, for yeah. sure. Um, you know, don't hit the rumble stairs. Don't hit the rumble stairs. <laughs> yeah. Right. Man, Joe, um, this is, this has been amazing. You and I could, cool. could, could go on forever, but I do want to just, I want to give you a chance to kind of highlight, uh, where people might be able to, first of all, find your music, but also your boys. Oh, sure. Uh, your boys have some music too, as well. And do, so yeah. maybe if you could just let people know that, and then we'll put that in the show notes too. Okay. Well, you know, yeah. my music, um, I don't, well, <laughs> I'm out there, you know, like on Spotify and Apple mm-hmm. Music under Joseph Mills. The things that are out there right now are pretty old. Right. Back in my mullet days. <laughs> so <laughs> big mullet. Yeah. Um, you know, we're not always as proud of our old stuff as we are of our new stuff. But For sure. my new stuff will be available any of those places. Okay. Any place that you listen to music, you know, Spotify and Apple Music and what have you. Okay. Um, nice. Yeah, same with uh, Stateline Drive. My kids are in the, that band, Stateline Drive, and they're also doing music. Um, they do a lot of things, actually. Stateline Drive is one of the things they do. There's a right. lot of other things that they're doing and a lot of other people they're playing with and working with. and. They've got new music coming out after the first of the year that's just going to be fantastic. Mm-hmm. We're excited and they, about they so. have a crazy busy tour summer or tour they, season they, every summer. Pretty they much, do. Don't they? 
They do, yeah. They've done really, really well. They've done pretty well. Yeah. yeah. What's been fun what's for the, me what's is... What's their, their website? Well, statelinedrive.com. There we go. Okay. I'm sure, yeah. Yeah. And what's been fun for me as a dad is when I was working with you and working with them is when we do shows together. Yeah, that was fun. We'd meet up somewhere on the road and, you know, have a show together, and that's what, that was always fun. Joe, thank you. Thanks for having yeah, me. We should do this again sometime. I'd love to. I imagine you'll have some more stories by then. I have stories I haven't even hit on. <laughs> right on. All right. Well, that's uh, yeah. that's this episode of the Dream Big series with Joe Mills. You've been listening to the Dream Big series. We would love to hear from you, so please leave us a comment on your favorite podcast platform. Don't forget to visit us at dreambigseries.com for more podcast videos and blogs. Also, let us know if you would like to bring the Dream Big Series event to your school, corporation, or organization. Thank you for listening to the Dream Big Series.